The fight over the city of St. George's plan to annex land from the city of Baton Rouge continues. More on the process coming up. Plus, it's week 13 of college football and the number one team in the country. The LSU Tigers return home for the Battle of the Golden Boot as the Arkansas Razorbacks visit Tiger Stadium. Live and Baton Rouge proud, you're watching Local 33 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Crystal Whitman. Thank you for joining us for NBC Local 33 News at 6. Well, St. George opposers are firing back tonight. The group One Baton Rouge held an informational annexation day for local residents. NBC Local 33's Kara St. Cyr has the story on the organization's annexation fight. The race to incorporate St. George ended in victory at the polls, but the results still don't sit well with opposers. We've had to add four additional tables to make sure that we can account for everyone who would like to annex. Amy Cormier, the leader of One BTR, an anti-St. George organization, has been helping the opposition fight back against the incorporation vote since it passed in October. Today, Cormier helped them file formal petitions for annexation into the capital city. You need uh, the property address. We have also listed the legal description and the parcel number, and you need all of the um, registered owners of the property to sign the petition, and that's it. Annexation into Baton Rouge is possible, according to state law, but it's a tedious process and also a two-way street. You'd need approval, and that takes time. Time St. George attorney and supporter Andrew Murrell says ran out on election night. We're trying to move forward with creating a city and working together. And instead, we're met with opposition, hostility, and litigation. Morrell popped up unannounced at the annexation day event. He says he showed up because the opposition rarely gets the facts right. I hope the people uh, in St. George are smart enough to ask the same questions and demand the answers. But on the other side, Emmy Cormier says if anyone is still looking to leave St. George, there's always a petition she's willing to help file. Kara St. Cyr, NBC Local 33 News. Now, if you missed today's event and would like more information about 1BTR's petition and tips for annexation, we'll have a link on our website. That's BRProud.com. Well, the man convicted of killing a Shreveport police officer back in 2015 has been served a life sentence. Grover Cannon was sentenced to life in prison for the killing of 29-year-old police officer Thomas Lavallee. The sentence came after the jury was unable to come to a unanimous agreement on the death penalty. The same jury convicted Cannon on Wednesday. Developing news on a tragedy for a Livingston Parish family tonight. Louisiana State Police say a fatal crash involving a man in a wheelchair was struck by his own nephew. LSP tells us the crash happened after 6.30 evening Friday on LA Highway 441. Authorities tell us that 47-year-old Jerry Schink was trying to cross the highway in his wheelchair when he was hit by his nephew Perry Schink, who was driving northbound on Highway 441. Jerry Schink was pronounced dead at the scene. Perry was uninjured. State police say the crash remains under investigation. Well, kickoff is just underway for the LSU Tigers, taking on one conference rival, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Go Nation Sports Director Brian Holland is at Tiger Stadium tonight to give us a preview of that game. Hey guys, yeah, just about to start the game out here at Tiger Stadium. We will have more at 10 p.m. A couple interesting scratches, though, especially on the offensive line. Dare Rosenthal not dressed out here in during warmups. Austin Deculus also will not play. And by the way, Grant Delpit, really the biggest scratch. He will not play this game, giving Maurice Hampton Jr. The prized baseball scout, LSU actually had to prime away from Major League Baseball draft. He's going to maybe play center field for Paul Maneri here in a couple of months. He will get his first career start at safety for this LSU football team. We'll have more at 10 p.m., including Coach O. Hopefully, though, a very happy head coach, Ed Ogeron. Till then, though, let's send it back to you. All right, thanks so much, Brian. Well, a local college in the capital city opened its doors today for prospective educators for the upcoming semester. Baton Rouge Community College held a faculty open house for those interested in teaching at the college. BRCC is in need of more teachers as their enrollment increases. They're also searching for educators who can give an insight to students on their careers. As we um, increase enrollment here at Baton Rouge Community College and meet the needs of our students. So we're very excited to have the opportunity to have persons come out and to get to know them and to find out if they uh, can teach with us. 
All right, well, more than 60 people signed up to attend today's event. Well, one community organizer in Baton Rouge is using this weekend to help out people in need. Today at the Boo Milton Give Back a Weekend, many services were given to families in need, such as haircuts, vision screenings, manicures, and many others. Uh, the event was also used as a food drive to help families in need of food before the holidays. Kids and adults were able to receive the free services provided. My favorite parts about this event is seeing the reactions of people like after they receive these services because you know when you look good you feel good I mean you know hey people come here already looking good but you know we just put a little polish on it you know we, we just line them up real real good and it just makes you feel better so just seeing that reaction and it's just it just warms my heart up well if you couldn't make it out today the event will be going on tomorrow from 10 until 1 at the McKinley High School Alumni Center well, coming on up later in sports, we'll give you an update on the Purple and Gold game against the Arkansas Razorbacks. And shopping season is already here, we know, of course. We'll give you an inside look at what goes into all the craziness of shopping during the holidays. That's next on NBC Local 33 News at 6.